Robots. Helpful or threatening? Cute or scary? Whether we like it or not, these machines are becoming more commonplace and fundamental to the way we live our lives. Let's chat. Whoops, can you say that again? In this series, the FT will take a closer look at the roles that robots may play in our homes, in the workplace and the world around us. We'll show how far this technology is advancing and what the coming robot revolution means for humanity. Talking to computers has been a dream of technologists and storytellers for decades. Time, yeah. Even if it can sometimes seem a bit scary. Encounters with disembodied intelligences are no longer confined to science fiction. Intelligent agents, digital assistants, chatbots. There's a growing array of these smart companions that are eager to become our guides to the digital world. Google is one of the powerful tech companies who believe the new technology will be as significant as the first phase of the web. It's the wild, wild west. Everyone's trying to figure out, like, what is the right modality? People really got very, very uh, familiar with, you know, accessing information on the web and, you know, using browser to kind of do things that they never could do, in, you know, before that. Um, so I see that kind of a step function uh, change in how people will actually react and interact with computing. But I also see a lot of experimentation needed to get to the next steps here. I'm here in this studio at Toy Talk, and this is where the voices of chatbots are recorded. Humans record thousands of lines of script, uh, and when you talk to an artificial intelligence in your smartphone or some physical object, uh, the machine will try to anticipate and understand what your interests are and then feed lines back to you that it thinks are in context. Um, so I have the first physical embodiment of that here. Um, this Barbie doll actually has a chat bot implanted inside. Let's chat. Whoops, can you say that again? Do you want to play a game or talk some more? I really like clothes. Definitely. What's the point if it's not fun? Why did the belt go to jail? I don't know. Why did the belt go to jail? Because he held up a pair of pants. <laughs> Want to hear another one? Uh-oh, I can't find a Wi-Fi network. It's not quite how, but chatbots like Barbie could be a forerunner of how we will all one day be talking to computers. These programs are sometimes given a veneer of human personality and are designed to engage you in conversation, usually by feeding back canned responses. They fit easily into today's widely used messaging systems, where they can chat back and forth with humans in text form. I think one of the interesting qualities of this trend is that it actually largely started um, in the East and has come here to the West. Um, what uh, WeChat in China in particular um, is the portals of the internet in mainland China and the number of bots and businesses that exist in texting there has been an enormous number for now half a decade. Just this year in 2016, we're gonna see that happen on the major platforms here in the States. Bots often come with personalities already baked in. They can appear in mobile chat apps or, like these, they can be designed as characters in video games, creating a new form of interactive storytelling. Facebook and Microsoft have both put bots at the centre of their plans recently, seeing the beginning of an entirely new way of living with computers. All the big tech companies are racing to experiment with different interfaces. There's the Amazon Echo, a black cylinder that sits on your kitchen table and orders groceries. Apple Siri, a question and answer system that was developed for smartphones. Google Now, a predictive assistant that tries to anticipate what you'll want to do next and give you the information before you even ask. Facebook M, a text messaging system which relies on people at the moment, but Facebook wants to replace with artificial intelligence. And Microsoft Cortana, a personal assistant 
that he's trying to make the move from the PC to the mobile world. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? The bar for success for all these experiments is set much higher than for many of today's technologies. To give you an example, if you, know, you search for something and you got an article, you got a pointer to a web page that's not as relevant, it's one thing. But let's say the assistant said, hey, you know, it's time to leave for your flight. And guess what? Your flight's delayed. No problem. And then it turns out it's not delayed and you miss the flight. That's the problem. The range of experimentation suggests the field is still wide open, with upstarts eager to challenge the big tech players. Voice-controlled digital assistants like Hound represent the first generation of these intelligent assistants. Chief Executive Kayvan Mohadja has been working on this dream for 10 years. When we designed Hound, it was very important to us that the interaction between the user and our application is very natural. So when you talk to Hound, we want the response to be natural, as if a human being is responding to your question. We wanted the responses to be grammatically correct, not too long, not too short, and delightful. Uh, OK, Hound. Show me coffee shops that are within a half a mile of where I am and that are open now. Here are several coffee shops within 0 0.5 miles. I'd like one that has the best coffee uh, and where I can sit outside uh, with free Wi-Fi. You didn't say OK, Hound, so it didn't. <laughs> Companies like Hound believe voice control will become even more important with the much-predicted okay, Internet of Things. Make me an espresso. When many everyday objects become smart and connected. No problem. Please place your cup under the spout and say ready. Ready. You can ask your espresso machine to give you a double shot espresso. While it's making the double shot espresso, you can say, how's the weather today? Who won the game last night? So one device can enable its own functionality but it can also enable multiple other domains that the creator of the device can think is useful for the end user. Communicating through voice or text messaging is only part of what makes these new digital assistants and agents intelligent. Behind the scenes, companies like Google are applying new types of machine learning and analyzing data about you to come up with the best answers. So how close are digital assistants getting to actually changing the way we live now? My colleague Leslie spent a week using a selection of them to find out. So today, <laughs> Alexa, stop. Today was my first day waking up with the voice of Missy Elliott. Needless to say, this really jarred me out of sleep and into a state of sort of fear and surprise right away. So it was very effective as an alarm. Uh, I've been using Alexa sort of around the house and my favorite time to use Alexa is really in the mornings, you know, when you're getting ready, getting dressed, cooking breakfast. Alexa doesn't always understand you, but uh, I feel like I'm getting better at talking to her. Um, so now it's time to, you know, head to the office. Sometimes I might take an Uber in. Um, Alexa, ask Uber to get me a ride. There is currently surge pricing. There is a multiplier of 1.7. So it looks like I will not be taking an Uber to work this morning. So one thing I've been trying out is Siri, the digital assistant uh, from Apple that's on my iPhone. Uh, and Siri's quite useful when I don't have the use of my hands, like when I'm on my bike and I need to send a text message or look at directions to a map. Um, however, beyond that, Siri's not much use. So for the past few days, I've been testing out an email assistant called Amy. Amy's like the personal assistant that you always wanted to have, or at least she's supposed to work that way. What happens is you copy Amy in on an email where you're setting up a meeting. Amy has access to your calendar and she'll just find a time when you and the other person can meet and she'll even send emails to your contact to see what works for them. But in practice, Amy's still sort of, you know, taking time to learn the nuances of the meetings that will work for me and she can't really predict, you know, if I'm going to be working on a story and maybe I don't want a meeting then. Uh, all she knows is what's in my Google, Google Calendar, which is not really a complete view of my life. I've also been playing around with Google's answer to Siri, which has the advantage of reading all my emails and automatically pulling in flights and reservations that it thinks I'll want to reference. So tonight I'm going to dinner and it's going to tell me how to get there. Unfortunately, beyond directions, I haven't really found it useful for much else. But it looks like my train is leaving now.
So, Leslie, you've been trying out these, uh, these intelligent agents. Uh, are they all they're cracked up to be? Well, I think they still have quite a ways to go. Um, There's some elements of my life that are more fun or more easy uh, using these digital assistants. Um, but overall, I've, I haven't found one that's really indispensable yet. So how easy is, are these things to use? Is there a lot of work in actually getting them to work for you? Well, I think having a really effective assistant, whether it's digital or person, it's really a question of identity. And I found with all these platforms, I had to do quite a bit of work and manual setup so that the digital assistant would really know who I was. Like with Amazon's Echo, I had to manually link it to all of my different accounts from Uber to Spotify to my calendars um, before it would really start to be useful to me. So are, are any of these platforms obviously the winner? Did you come away thinking, you know, there's one you'd really like to use? Well, for the past couple of days, I think Alexa has been the most fun. It's kind of a cool party trick, like everyone who walks into my house just wants to play with it. That's really been the most compelling platform and the one that I think I'll be most likely to keep using. And although these things are still quite basic, did you come away with a sense that, you know, this is the future? There's something surprisingly delightful about having a, this intelligent voice from the cloud that speaks to you, answers your question, and I think that digital assistants are here to stay. The shift to intelligent agents and a new computer interface raises big questions, and not just for consumers. Who will control these new digital channels, and how will businesses make money from them? I don't think that the app model goes away. I do think it's very different, though, to be hanging out and iMessage or Facebook Messenger or WeChat or pick your favorite WhatsApp, favorite chatting platform, and be able to find brands and businesses in that context that you can text back and forth with. I think that um, businesses will now have an additional thing to learn and to put into their palette of ways to connect with audiences and customers. And the use of natural language to do that is a very unique field because it involves elements of, of narrative and character and story structure and elements of interactive design and interaction design. And those two things come together to build a computer conversational experience. Despite the considerable hype, the intelligent agents are not quite ready for prime time. Their language abilities are not perfect. They don't always know exactly what we want, but they're making rapid progress. And this leaves plenty of questions. What are we giving up in return for the convenience of talking to the machines? They will be making assumptions about what we should know and when. They'll be in the background, listening, perhaps watching what we're doing. They will assume more control over our lives. But the payoff in terms of a more useful and practical coexistence with the computers could be significant. It was time to take our rock star robot to our VIP meeting room for some more intensive questioning, but not before a quick visit to the canteen to pick up some provisions. Does someone need a hug?